We praise God for this awesome, awesome day. This is a day that he has made, and we're glad in it. So happy for little Nikayla and being baptized today. That was a joy to see. And it's just good to be in the house of the Lord once again. We've been engaged in a brand new series called The Lord is Coming. And it's based out of the book of Joel. And I tell you, for me personally, uh, looking at the book of Joel has been an awesome experience. His writing really parallels to what's going on in our day. Uh, when he stood before the prophetic window, he could not only see the events for his generation, but God allowed him to look and see what would happen even during the time of the Apostle Paul and even now. In fact, when we look at Joel, we're caught up and we ask the question, is he talking about now? Because the things that he speaks of is like reading the morning newspaper or looking at the evening news. I'm reminded once again in Joel, the first chapter, he asks a question, have you ever seen anything like this? And our answer is no, we have not. We've never seen a pandemic like this. And it seems that the pandemic has even overshadowed something else, and that's a gun epidemic. In the city of Chicago, on one weekend, 74 people were murdered. One weekend, uh, and there are the deaths through suicide and mass shootings and urban warfare, on and on. We've never seen anything like this. We have never, I've never seen a time where the moral standards for a game show host will be higher than that for our lawmakers. Um, this is a time of greed and we're made to pull back and again, ask the question, when Joel makes a statement, the Lord is coming, um, we ask, is he coming right now? <laughs> when we study scripture in light of other scripture, for example, when we look into the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, the things that we see right now, Jesus says, must appear before the time of his coming. So then we are made to look at God's calendar and we see that the time of his coming is very, very near. And what Joel is doing then is preparing us. This is a dress rehearsal. He's giving us a sneak preview of the things that are going to happen. So what do we do in the meantime, Pastor? In the second chapter of Joel, God gives him a command to sound the trumpet. And everyone in Jerusalem and Judah, Israel, knew the significance of those sounds were to bring the people into worship, to have them to disperse, to come to war, and also to honor the feast days. So when we look at God's calendar, what's amazing to us is that the sound of the trumpet coincides with the Feast of Trumpets, which just occurred on September 7th and 8th. That led us then to the Feast of Atonement that was just a few days ago on the 15th. And not only that, then it leads us into the next feast. All of these are significant times 
because it speaks of the time where our Lord is coming back. So God is getting us ready. He's calling us up on last Sunday, which was the 12th. Um, we read from Joel 2 and 12 that says, Therefore also now, said the Lord, turn to me, turn to me. And then we got down to the 15th verse, uh, and it reminded us of the Feast of Atonement, where it says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. And I praise God that our elders, ministers, and deacons responded to that. This past Wednesday, they came together in a time of fasting and consecration, and they went before the Lord in prayer uh, in atoning for their families, this church, our community, our world. And I tell you, I was absolutely amazed and blessed. I sat over there on the side. I wanted to come forth, but the Spirit said, no, no, you just, you sit and listen. Um, I was to observe what the Holy Spirit put in those ministers through this teaching to see if they had it. And oh, my goodness, did they have it. Uh, what they don't know is that they were all over the Bible study that I had pre-recorded that day. What they didn't know is that they were all over the message that I'm about to preach right now. The Holy Spirit was really moving. Elder Latier pulled it all together, and thank you, brother, for that. And uh, his prayer warriors, Leslie included, uh, were present, and Jerry Jones facilitated everything and courageously and boldly at the same time she if you will led everybody in the room to the mountain of God and up 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 the mountain they started off with scripture uh, then denouncing sin that could exist in the house right and then they began to declare a prophetic word for you and your children and everything they were saying was just hitting my spirit as they spoke it i'd already began to think it it was just lining up and i was about to explode one of the passages that they read which is so significant is this from second chronicles 7 and 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Yeah, it is a moment to shout because our land needs healing. Would you agree? Well, why that was so significant and why it resonated in my spirit is because all day long I have been studying this passage and the Lord said, this is where you're going on Sunday. And it reviews once again uh, the verse beginning with uh, chapter 15, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast. The people come together. Uh, and then in the 18th verse, it says, after you've done that, basically, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and have pity for his people. In other words... Where in um, Joel's time, he saw 
a nation on the brink of obliteration, and God pulled them back. What he was saying to me at that moment, whereas our land is in this state of peril, God is pulling us back. And he's turning things around. There's about to be a major shift. He's healing the land. And in verse 21, he says, don't fear. Things are looking crazy. But don't fear. Instead of fearing, be glad. Rejoice because God is going to take you through. As God took the Israelites through the wind, the fires, and the floods, God is going to take us through also. And now we get to the detail of what he was telling me at that day and um, or in that day as they were ministering and as I had been studying. Verse 23 says this be glad you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month now I read this from the King James Version because when we hear this kind of language, usually it goes like this. We, <laughs> we don't understand what Joel is, is saying. So I want to try to explain it to you from my own experience. My dad's father was Clifford Pyphus. And he died four years before I was born. I never got a chance to meet him. But... I love my mom's dad, Benny Strayhorn, and got a chance to spend a lot of time with him in, in their hometown of Gates, Tennessee. It was a one-stop light town, not a lot of places to go, and I knew <laughs> when we got in his pickup truck, we were going to one of three places or all three places. That was a field. It was white shotgun church or we were going down to the general store. <laughs> and I could anticipate what the conversation was going to be with the old men at that time. They were going to talk about the weather. And they would talk about the weather because all of them were farmers. So what happened in terms of the weather was really significant. Um, they not only needed the sun, they not only needed the rain, but they needed the right amount. Too much would be disastrous. And cotton was their lifeblood. In fact, I just learned in that particular county, uh, they they produced most of the cotton in the whole state of Tennessee. So the right amount of rain and the right amount of sunshine was significant. And I've thought about this, Elder, is that even though they were divided by faith and race and resources, they were all together on one accord when it came to the understanding that it is God that provided for their crops. They were on one accord with it. And that helped me to understand this particular verse and where Joel is coming from. And you have to understand the whole context there is that in Israel, rain was scarce. It didn't rain <laughs> in the summer months. And it hardly rained in the winter months. So when they received rain, they were grateful. And because the rain was so scarce, they began to name 
the types of rain. They differentiate the rain from the autumn rain and the spring rain. Autumn rain uh, comes from a Hebrew word that means archer or teacher. And it comes from, it's rooted in a word, yare, which also speaks of watering and sprinkling and teaching. He says, God has given you the rain moderately, and that word moderately is a Hebrew word that is connected to right and righteousness. So in other words, when you put it together, he says, I'm going to give you back a teacher that's going to show you what is right and how to live right and not take these blessings for granted. Hear this as we put it all together. Deuteronomy 11 and 13, it says, And it shall come to pass, if you hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, meaning He's going to give you the autumn rain, and he's also going to give you the spring rain. And that autumn rain made the soil ready for the seed. With all of that understanding, when I got into that little shotgun church, I understand even the more how my aunts and my grandmother would catch on fire during the offertory period. Because they knew that God was responsible for sending the rain. It used to sing a song. You know this song. You can't beat God giving. Yeah, y'all know that? And one of the verses says, he sends the sun. He sends the rain. He sends the harvest, the golden grain. And he stops by to see me. Every now and then, he's mine. He's my friend. Now, now when I take the rain, the former rain, and I put it in the context of church history, and this is really important, I see Pentecost where God rained down the Holy Spirit and he gave gifts to the church, and now the church is growing. But you know what's happening now, Legina? We're experiencing this latter rain. You all talked about in prophecy generations, generations, and somebody began, I think it was Jerry, moving back and forth over the stage. And uh, my soul got happy because I was saying and hearing the same thing, generations, generations, generations and my soul is happy at this very moment because what I see is that in 2002 God sent for me a, a form of rain right then he made the soil ready for the seed and now in this latter rain, the next generation is coming on. <laughs> and you know what I saw? The glory of the latter rain is going to be greater than the first. This next generation is going to move the house into another dimension. And for that, I rejoice. Can you rejoice with me right now? Let's just praise God. Verse 24, it says, And the floors shall be full of wheat. 
and the fats, that is the wine press, shall overflow with wine and oil. I wondered, I wondered, Michael, why God would take me back to my childhood and see the stuff in, in, uh, on the farm. And the more I studied, he took me to a place where I, I saw the barn in HD effect. And, and I looked around the entire barn and I was reminded of the fact that my granddad was a very neat man. The barn was not cluttered at all with unnecessary stuff. And see, here's the point, is that he trusted and believed that God was going to multiply everything on his farm. And my question to you is that do you believe that God is about to multiply the resources that he's given to you is your place ready to receive the blessings of God in abundance where there will be an overflow there will be so much more than you can ever imagine or think that's what's happening in the spirit and let's praise God together the floors <laughs> There's going to be an overflow. So let me back up. God gives, God gives the right amount of rain for more than enough. Just, just the right amount. Just the right amount. Just the right amount. In these lean times, in these lean times, yes, it's been tough. But it's been just enough to get you to the next place where there's about to be an overflow. Hallelujah. Verse 25, he says, <laughs> I will restore. Can you shout that out for me? Restore. The Hebrew word for restore is interesting. It's shalom. Yeah, it's, it's shalom. It speaks of soundness of mind. Soundness not only of mind, but of your body mm -hmm. and your entire estate. It speaks of a covenant with peace. It speaks of compensation. <laughs> Have you ever worked? And worked and worked and worked and worked. And you realize you were not being compensated adequately for all of your work. Well, God is about to move here in this season. And he's saying, I am going to restore. Restore what? To you, the years. And Elder Latier read of these things that have been sent actually uh, like this, I call it the army of the Taliban who've just come in and taken over. And I don't only see this as an army from without. You know, sometimes, sometimes there's an army of sin in you that can work against you. Would you agree? You remember in the Garden of Eden where the Diabolo came to Adam and Eve and he caused them to turn against themselves. They turned against themselves in self-indulgence, in self-governance, in self-direction, and self-destruction. And we have their DNA. <laughs> We've inherited some things that are destructive to us that have been eating away at our destiny. But God is about to move. He's about to deal with some things that are even in your DNA. Amen. Even in your DNA. You know, if you can't get happy about that for yourself, get happy for your children that God is dealing with some stuff in your DNA. Mm -hmm. 
And when you clear, when, when he's broken that, something will happen. Your appetite for the word is different. Verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And that's, that's not just talking about physical food, but I see that talking about spiritual food. I'm feeling the move of God right here. and Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, folks won't be playing musical chairs with churches, hopping from this place to the other, but they're going to get settled. They'll get mature. They'll sit at one table. They won't be blown by every wind and doctrine, and they will be satisfied. They won't have an appetite for the traditional popcorn stuff anymore. Mm -mm. But the meat of the word. Hallelujah. And they're going to be satisfied. Those who still have the appetite for the traditional word will starve. They are starving. Now, <laughs> they will eat plenty and be satisfied and praise. That word praise comes from the Hebrew word hallel. It's rooted in hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? Can you say hallelujah again? Can you praise him with your hallelujahs right now? And that hallelujah is to be clear, to be clear in your mind. When you have the right appetite of the word of God, he clears your mind. The junk comes out. Uh, and there's clarity in terms of who you are. That's it. And what you are. Where you've come from. And where you are going. Here it is. And man, I'm about to end right here. God called the Israelites and Joel to a consecration and he said, return to me, return to me, return to me. Surrender yourself. And when you surrender yourselves, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift. And to top it off, you know, all of these things that I, I talked about in terms of what God is going to give you, that's all good. That's, that's good. But here's the most important thing. Verse 27 says, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God. <laughs> and basically, there's no other God beside me. You're going to know. You're going to know. Gnosko is the word for know in Greek. It's to know emphatically. But here, it's yada in Hebrew. What did you say, Minister Listing? To know him in an intimate way, not on a philosophical or intellectual basis, but to know him, to walk with him, and to get to know him in that sense. I think Mother Cherry will be a witness to this, is that God may have to take you through some things. <laughs> he, just, he just might have to strip you of some things. He might, he might have to allow some storms to come in your life. That's, that's how you get to know him, right? Yes. And that's why Job was able to say in the 42nd chapter, I know because he's been through some things. Amen. I, I know. 
I know. So there's about, there's about to be a shift. God is going to restore blessings untold. Get glad. Amen. And the key thing for all of us is to return to him. Amen. Return to the land of your soul. Of your soul. Return, return, return. Legina Burton, you walked in the door and I about passed out. <laughs> With your little with gifted self, walking in the glory of the Lord. I've been working on a song this week. I tracked it. And would you know, I saw you dancing to this song. I'm going to give you the words. You take your mask off, take your shoes off, and Brianna can join you, and y'all just, you just do, yeah, the dancers, all of you. It's, it's free praise. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the words. Yeah, that's how we do it here. Listen, the Holy Ghost in you ain't scared. So just, <laughs> you, you might be like, oh, <laughs> this is a surprise, Pastor. The Holy Spirit in you is rising up and saying, yes. <laughs> yes. So here are the words. Return again. Return again. Return to the land of your soul. And these words are so profound to me. And I'm speaking to somebody in, in the audience here. And I, I got a chance to share with a brother who just was just totally transparent with me. He said, Pastor, I've been out there. And I know the hand of God is on me. Oh, man. <laughs> and the words right here say, return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you were born and reborn. Relive the lives of your fathers before you who died with the song of the Lord on their lips. They said, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. So while the ladies are getting ready to do their dance, for those of you that are home or in your office, um, <laughs> if, you, if you're in your truck or your car, you might want to pull over. <laughs> but if you're, you're in a space, you might want to make some room and just move about. Um, I'm grateful for the band. Praise God for our band. They heard the song for the first time today, and oh my God, the things that they've done with it. Okay, so return. Yes.
died with the song of the Lord on their lips. They say, Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Land 
of your soul Return again Return again Return to the land of your soul